Hello everyone, this is Watch Me Stress and welcome to my second watch review video. Today we're going to be looking at my third watch in my collection, which is my 1940s men's Zenith wristwatch. A little bit about the Zenith Watch Company. It was founded in 1865, uh, which actually makes it 40 years older than the Rolex Watch Company. It certainly isn't as well known here in the United States, but it is a uh, well-known brand in Europe and has quite the history. It's one of the few brands that can trace its heritage all the way back to the beginning of mass watch production, which happened maybe around 1860s, 1870s or so. Prior to that, only the wealthy guys had, uh, had watches, and if they had one, it was going to be a pocket watch, which was custom made by a, by a watchmaker. Um, so us uh, poor people would have had to just uh, ask the time from the rich guys, or rely on the town uh, clock to, to get to work on time. But uh, Getting on to the specifics of this particular watch, it is the first watch that I in my collection that I would say is all original and so what does that mean well what's critical about uh, vintage watch collecting uh, mostly is is the dial that is the the part of the watch that you see modified or reprinted I'll, I'll say most frequently and it's because it's the most delicate part of the watch um, also, the, the case, the hands, and the movement certainly are important, but more often than not, you're going to find that the dial is the part that is uh, not original to the factory as it, as it left. And so how do I know that this particular watch has, a, has an original dial? Well, if you look closely here in the video, you can see this little chicken pock marks going on here. It is a sign of a watch that... Uh, it's, you know, it has time. It has age on it. it it's clearly has some corrosion issues. It's, it's pretty typical of what you'll see with an old, uh, old dial like this. And typically, this types of marks are happening in the, in the base layer or the, the primer of the, of the dial. And ironically enough, it's actually a good sign. You would think that a dial that is uh, in pristine condition is ideal. And uh, actually, it's not because it generally means that somebody else reprinted it and repainted over it. And as a consequence, it's not as valuable. And for most of these vintage watches, 30 to 50% of the value of the watch is in the dial. So if you have some old watches sitting in your drawer, you just leave the dial as is. Uh, moving on to the movement of this watch. Being the 1940s era, it was intended to be worn as a pocket, uh, rather a wrist watch. And what I wanted to do right now is to kind of compare it to the watch from my first video. So here on the right is my Long Jeans uh, repurposed pocket watch movement from the, uh, say, early 1900s. And I'm going to throw in a quarter here just for size comparison pur purposes. And as you can see, here's a, a early 1900s pocket watch movement. Here is a wristwatch movement from the 1940s and as a consequence of people wanting to wear these watches on their wrists um, the movements had to shrink and you can clearly see the size difference here that happened um, around this well it's about 30 year difference between these two movements but it's pretty stark contrast between the two and as a consequence also uh, from my first review I noted that this watch movement here on the right is quite loud the one on the left you you're not going to hear that unless you're a dog or something um, so moving on to the rest of the watch, I want to take a look at the case back here. One way to tell that the case is original to the watch is just by looking at the nomenclature that one uses here on the back. Ironically, you would think that the serial number printed on the uh, case back here is important, and for the most part, it, it isn't, doesn't tell you a whole much whole bunch but what does tell you something is one it says zenith up top so you clearly know that this is from a zenith watch factory and number two is the nomenclature that they use to describe the material generally goes in here and you're going to find various names depending on the time era um, these are all basically this means it's stainless steel which was a, a big thing back in the day and this particular nomenclature kind of places the watch uh, case to be made around pre-1950s 
So moving on to the movement. Take a look at the movement here. The movement should also have Zenith, the manufacturer's um, labeling, as well as a serial number. Now this serial number on the movement is actually the most important one because you can take this number and enter it into uh, many of the Google forums for at least the larger manufacturers and if you enter this number into them you can get an idea maybe within a year to three of when this movement was manufactured. And the important thing to do is when you when you get that date, when you plug this in and you find out that this movement was made in the 1940s, 1945, then the case should also have the nomenclature consistent with the 1940s and the styles should also look like it was out of the 1940s. And one of the telltale signs of an early, say, pre-1950s watch, if I flip it back over here, is the use of subdials for the second hand. You see the subdial. What is what is a subdial? Subdial is basically a small dial that's off centered of the watch. So with most modern watches, you'll find the second hand is right here with the other two hands, the minute and the hour hand, extending all the way out to the edge. But in the 1940s or so, they tend to I don't I don't know the reason behind it to be honest, but they tend to put them off center and typically just above the six o'clock position here. So that's also an indicator of the time error of this particular watch. And so all these things combined tend to tell you that, you know, the watch is original, the dial, the, the movement, the hands, all, all these things kind of indicate that the watch has been untouched. And, uh, you know, fairly cool watch, fairly, fairly slim. I like the style of it. But uh, anyhow, that's, uh, that pretty much sums up the review of my uh, Zenith wristwatch. So moving on to the, the price that I paid for it now, I want to point out that the reason I'm telling the price that I paid for these things is not so much to brag or to show off or anything like that, but just to show that it's not necessarily a rich man's game to collect these things. I mean, this is a, this is a very good manufacturer, well respected and everything, but $350 is uh, not much more than you would go out and buy a, you know, a modern watch out at a jeweler's. Um, the big difference, though, between, say, this vintage watch or a $300 watch you would buy at the mall is I can turn around and I can sell this watch at any time and probably get my money back out of it. So I highly recommend if, if you're considering or at least interested in uh, vintage wristwatches like this, uh, you know, give it a shot. And Zenith, Zenith is certainly a good brand, a good watch, and, uh, you know, I, I like this one quite a bit. So anyhow, thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully uh, you'll tune into my next videos. This is uh, Watch Me Stress, and thanks for watching.